the Netflix Terminator anime. As everything Netflix, it's either absolutely amazing or complete trash. And in this case, I have watched five episodes and currently have absolutely no plans to ever watch it again. I personally think it's pretty bad. And my confusion about the plot is absolutely endless at this point, because not a lot of things make even a single thread of sense. Besides a few halfway decent video games, the life of a Terminator fan is one of unending disappointment. The first two Terminators True. are some of the best sci-fi blockbuster cinema ever made, using high concept the second one's all right-ish. It's pretty good, but it's not the best. But yeah. Context to breathe new life into the classic movie monster formula of a big guy who's coming for you, and no matter what you do, he ain't gonna stop. Then, in the sequel, that big guy's on your side, but there's an even bigger guy now, and no matter what that first guy does, he's not gonna stop. Now that's how you escalate a f Oh yeah, this is, this is the scene that everyone remembers. ...in Hollywood franchise. However, without the wise guidance of James Cameron, the Hollywood money men who own that IP now just do not have the single slightest hint of an idea of what to do with it. So we've gotten sequel yeah. after soft reboot, after ill-conceived prequel that don't really have any ideas either outside of rehashing stuff that worked in those first two movies and slapping a thin coat of new Terminator lore on top for the nerds. But all that lore still centers on the big JC, John Connor, his immaculate time travel conception, and various skullduggery surrounding that one big evil company in Silicon Valley. You know the one. And while that Superman out Evil company in Silicon Valley does not narrow it down a lot. Allegory stuff was okay for a couple movies. It kind of just makes the world that's ending feel smaller and more one-dimensional the more times they keep coming back to that well. So, no, Skydance, I don't think that another new one with geriatric Arnie in it is gonna fix the problem, actually. Get some new f material, please. And hey, good news, they finally did. Sourced straight from Japan. Okay, okay, this is one of the scenes. So, when I watched the first episode, I was like, hell yeah, this is good. The blood, the everything looks good. And then this scene happened, I was like, oh my god, is this gonna be an absolute girl boss? Because this scene defies all reason, all physics, all everything. It's just a girl boss moment. But thankfully, it's pretty much the only kind of girl boss moment that is in this series. The girl bossing does not really happen here. But the character, characters as stupid as they come. Well, everything in this anime is as stupid as it can be. There's a lot of attempts to make it morally questionable, to make it a little bit higher elevated in what it's trying to uh, portray. And it all falls extremely flat because it's stupid. And, and the legendary cyborg violence artisans at Production IG, Terminator Zero is easy. But yeah, it, it does look amazing. The animation, absolutely gorgeous. The best entry in the franchise since its first sequel, and not coincidentally, the only one where nobody says, come with me if you want to live, or I'll be back at any point, at least in the English dub, which is the original script for the show. The Japanese version was done later, uh, so if anybody does in that version, that is localizers with an agenda. Also, yes, it does feature a lavishly Oh, the localization that I watched here was so absolutely bad. I don't know Japanese, but I do know the, uh, the a couple of phrases, a couple of things. And the localization, with least what I watched, was terrible. They literally just substituted whole sentences with fuck. So, yeah, just a whole sentence. And they just substituted with the word fuck. There you go. And the localization for this thing is absolutely beyond atrocious. The animated making of a Terminator sequence, though sadly it is not accompanied by Kenji Kawai music. Michelle Bursky and Kevin Henthorne's OST is still pretty damn good, it's just no- 
I don't remember a single OST or anything of, of this, honestly. Oh, Kenji Kawai soundtrack, though few soundtracks are. The show itself is the brainchild of the Batman and Berserker creator Matson Tomlin and Sanrio Boys director Masashi Kudo, telling a story <laughs> both figuratively and literally about breaking free of that endless concept. Dude, these scenes are so good because nothing is happening. I, and the first couple of episodes are pretty, are pretty decent, I feel like. But then when the characters need to speak and explain their actions or they try to go into deep moral quandaries about a human bad for planet, it, it just goes off the rails. And I'm going to speak about all of this, but I'm pretty sure he's going to mention the plot or whatever because shit just does not make sense, okay? loop that Terminator's been stuck in since Mr. Cameron sailed off on his Titanic. Set in a retro-futuristic Tokyo circa 1997, specifically August 29th, which if you know, you know, we're so many loops deep into the war with Skynet at this point that they actually mention it that everyone's afraid because terrorism and things. They, they literally mention why the, uh, everything is like that. Even the AIs lost count. John Connor even got God eventually in one of those loops, but that was really just the beginning because new resistance leaders simply rose up to take- Okay, I did not watch this thing until the end, but my question is very simple for those of you who did. Is this grandma the other artificial intelligence at the end or something like that? Because this grandma is the first problem of problems. And that is that she's the wild, wide, oh, wide, what? Wise old sage character that sends our female protagonist back into the future to uh, prevent something. We don't know. Well, we actually do know what, but we don't know why. Because we don't know if that is actually Skynet. Or what? Because it's in Japan, so it shouldn't be Skynet. And spoiler, it's not Skynet. It's a different AI. And turns out, she needs to prevent it from coming online. Which is dumb, because turns out the Terminator by Skynet was also sent to prevent it from coming online. Yeah, the Terminator and the protagonist have the same goal of preventing the AI from coming online. Now, admittedly, you don't really know why the Terminator was sent uh, sent back in time, but at the same time, you kind of can guess that they want to prevent it from coming online, which is like, what, 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 what who, why, where? It, it's just, it's just dumb. Take his place time and again, obviously, because that's how guerrilla armies tend to work. With so many time travelers coming and going, though, broader parts of the world have become increasingly aware of the impending spooky, scary skeleton robot threat and begun working toward their own solutions to the whole apocalypse problem that don't... Mm, that's not actually anything of the plot that I know about, at least in the first five episodes. Maybe I watched six, I don't remember. But anyway, that's not the plot of... No! No, 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 no. What he's talking about is the main character, by the way, who's uh, deadbeat black dad. Very cool. And obviously a brilliant scientist. Go figure. And yeah, he he's in Japan. <laughs> and he's creating this artificial intelligence because he sees in his dreams Skynet coming online and essentially just a good old playground scene. We, we do get to see a version of that, which is pretty nice. But the animation does actually become very lazy on, like, you know, the third, fourth episode. In a lot of cases of the flashbacks, the nukes and everything. Yeah. But in any case, yeah, that kind of happens. And that that's the thing. No one else knows about Skynet. Just one rando dude who kind of sees it in his dreams and then he's like, must abandon family to create... Uh, girlfriend AI. Don't involve anyone in California for once. In Tokyo, for instance, Dr. Malcolm Lee is developing his own super powerful AI to rival Skynet named Kokoro, who he hopes. Okay, good. He said the name I because I forgot the name Kokoro. Okay, yeah. So again, this AI 
is supposed to battle against Skynet. And Skynet sends a Terminator back into the past to stop it from activating. Why? We're gonna get to that. We're gonna don't you worry, we're gonna get to that because that makes no sense. Why actually? But the resistance fighters are also sent back in time to prevent Kokoro from being activated. Yeah, again, they have the same goal. Might one day save humanity from our fated doom. Only problem is it's pretty much Judgment Day, and he's still not sure if she'll actually want to save us after she comes online. Co yes. And th uh, he is kind of an, uh, th this, uh, this whole guy, this whole scene, he hasn't done anything but abandon his family and effectively just constantly talk to that AI Kokoro. And he's supposed to be our a deeper reflection into humanity itself. Are we actually good? And the moral quandary, if something's gonna wipe us out, do we actually deserve saving? And the stupidity starts here because this whole idea is humanity inherently good or evil is kind of a decent one it is a decent conversation and are we good for the planet is also a thing because we destroy everything around ourselves do we do we deserve a second chance and things like that, that those are those are reasonable things to have conversations about but with this AI, effectively, how badly it's done, it boils down to this. AI says, humans kind of may be bad because look at what you do to the planet. Uh, yeah, you destroy it, bro. Trust me, bro. Yeah, it's like, well, you're constantly just ruining the planet. And he says, yeah, true. But we are, we are something much more. And she's like, okay shoot your shot and he's like no 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 I, I, I can't just it i can't i can't just it i i can't i can't i can't now and he does this like five times or something like that when i stopped watching i have no idea what his grand plan to convince the ai that humans actually are worth uh saving it, uh, pff, <laughs> what he's gonna actually tell her i don't think anything because the reason why humans bad is because we destroy the planet and if humans are left to thrive, they're going to destroy the planet. Now, the irony of saying this sentence, obviously, is the fact that we see the opposite AI literally completely destroy the planet by a uh, carpet nuke bombing it. Yeah. Okay, so the moral argument are humans good for the planet no longer is even remotely interesting because we see that, hey, even if humans are bad for the planet, at least we do it slowly and maybe we can change. Uh, but Skynet just literally carpet bombed everything and now nothing exists any longer, okay? So uh, the, the moral quandary are humans good doesn't matter because the AI is 100% worse in any case. So, yeah, this is how they fail the moral quandary about human good or bad. Okoro's been granted free will, you see, since, you know, obviously everything they tried to shackle Skynet's intelligence over at Cyberdyne didn't actually work and only ended up making the murder robots matter. So, with the clock ticking a minute from midnight, Malcolm is left scrambling to concoct just one compelling enough philosophical, ethical, or even emotional argument to convince his creation that mankind deserves salvation. Whether yep. Malcolm's plan is fated to fail or succeed, though, the existence of a second electronic superintelligence poses a pretty obvious threat to Skynet's ambitions, so Skynet does what Skynet always does and sends a big scary metal guy back in time to get him. But of course... Okay, so you see why sending big scary metal guy back in time doesn't, uh, doesn't make sense? Because from the start, we don't actually know about Kokoro and how she's going to be a problem with Skynet. We don't even know... Uh, we just know that Skynet wants uh, the black scientist dead Zo. That's all we know. And later it's revealed that, yeah, uh, Skynet fears the Kokoro's activation. Now, why the hell does Skynet fear Kokoro's activation? Don't know. Because in the future, it's pretty damn, it's pretty damn very, very, very asserted that Skynet has full dominance. We don't see Kokoro helping the humans or going up against Skynet. 
it, it doesn't exist. Kokoro in the future doesn't exist. So why is the Kokoro a threat to Skynet? Don't know. It shouldn't be, because it seems like Skynet has all the upper hand. The Resistance catches wind of that plan and does what the Resistance always does, sending their scrappiest wasteland warrior back behind the Terminator to get him before he gets the other guy. That warrior's name is Aiko, but... I like to call her mommy, and I would also like to personally <laughs> thank the animators at Production IG for drawing her naked so good. Also, while we're saying- You can't see anything. Thanks. Thanks very much for how good you guys drew all the brutal violence when the other Terminator finds her yeah. family right before her time jump, and all the other brutal violence- all By the way, that Terminator got injected with something at the start. And again, when I stopped watching, nor he has come back to the past, which I think he's going to uh, come back to the past and save them because he's good now, obviously. Or, you know, some, something similar, which th doesn't make a lot of sense like, like that. But that has not happened. So, the plot has a lot of problems here. While I do like, uh, while I do absolutely love Mommy because she is hot, uh, she is also completely mentally deficient. Oh, yes. That character is beyond stupid, okay? Uh, she doesn't explain anything. She doesn't value human life. Uh, her goals are orbit, uh, completely orbitrous. And nothing she does really kind of makes sense. She's really evil against some people, and they're like, oh, you're probably actually good. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm actually the good guy. And flippity flop floopity bloop uh that's effectively what happens she does not make a single smart decision in the entire story as far as i know all over this whole anime it is rare nowadays to see animated blood and gore with also by the way uh later on we learn that the sterminator that skynet sent back has an objective of not actually destroying kokoro uh, but turning uh, turning it to Skynet's side by infecting it with something. Which doesn't make sense because that Terminator is already dead and Kokoro's on the internet, so he could should be able to technically infect her and make her Skynet's partner, but that doesn't happen. I'm, I'm not sure why, but, you know, it doesn't this much of a visceral impact and between that and the well sculpted well animated butts it really feels like the studio going back to its pulpy straight to video roots which i cannot think of a more perfect aesthetic fit for a terminator anime especially one that focuses on that classic fleshy t800 model over the sleek cgi shape shifting of the t1000 of course since he is running a terminator prevention research lab doc malcolm naturally has some pretty substantial anti-terminator security setup including a massive emp weapon that doubles as a shutoff switch for kokoro so the metal monster's mission is oh i did not know that isn't quite as simple as just walking through the front door guns blazing it's yes so this is the second part okay uh our main female protagonist is trying to uh find that guy to prevent him from switching on kokoro and our opponent is doing the same but uh, he he wants to go in, he checks the defenses, and he's like, Ah, oh, shit, boy, this is not good. And then he has the brilliant idea to go after his children. Yep. And at first it seems like they're, ju they're just going to be killed, but he doesn't do that. There are a lot of scenes where he gets the upper hand, but then it just all just blows apart, and it's really dumb. The, the children effectively kind of outsmart him and things like that happen. It's, it's kind of dumb how it happens. But anyway, his genius plan is to take the children of the deadbeat dad who could not be asked to actually care for, uh, for them that much because he's uh, because only, the only thing he really cares about is Doomsday. And after Doomsday happens, uh, does the dad even remotely care about his kids being alive? No! No, not at all, in fact. And I think he's still trying to get the kids because reasons. <laughs> it's like, 
because he wants to use them as a bargaining chip to get uh to get him so he can do something yeah. uh, again it's really dumb it makes no sense especially since he's not in america where blazing guns can be conveniently acquired within a few blocks of basically any target you might want to hit but malcolm just happens to have three kids kenta reika and hiro who just happen to be convenient oh wait when you remember when i said that there's no girl boss i lied do you want to guess who the girl boss is That's right, it's the seven-year-old daughter. She she just takes control of all the situations and makes people do everything she wants, even though she's seven, and we have absolutely no clue if she's smart or not. This kid right here is at least shown to be a capable uh, engineer like his father or something, uh, but she... she, she she just takes control of, of, of everything. It's pretty insane. Reika and Hiro, who just happened to be conveniently located in buildings much more susceptible to the old I'll be back. So a pretty obvious path around that security presents itself to the Terminator. And while they and the family housekeeper Misaki are lucky enough to be out of the apartment when he comes. Misaki's a Roomba, by the way. Did, don't know why, don't know how, but yeah, she's a Roomba knocking chasing after reika who ran away with a robot cat that kenta wanted to take apart to see how it works you know how it is with terminators it's not a yeah this is the part where the terminator finds her and they just give them the slippery kids the thing matter of if they'll catch up to you but when and where and how much collateral damage questions which this anime is thankfully quite eager to find some very exciting answers to playing hits like the classic police station raid and highway yeah. chase scene alongside some delight the highway chase scene's pretty bad they really skip on the animation there fully tense and novel horror sequences and the dark dilapidated shopping arcades of old to these are pretty good but then you understand that this guy's a terminator and he can't catch a little child plus well half the fun is not knowing where the killer robot's gonna show up next right but you get it they got some real nice backdrops for equally nice action scenes that walk a yeah, very fine good. line between paying homage to the series past and blazing forward along a bull oh this one was absolutely just great the sequence did make sense because she's in the driver's seat and then she just rams the terminator off the bridge and then she's magically on top running y you kind of get the point along a bold new path one fascinating feature of that new path is the addition of enos to the terminator universe an obvious riff on the osimo robots created by honda's engine uh this is hilarious and absolutely stupid okay so when kokoro comes online you know what she does she's like okay well i haven't decided about the future of humanity so i'm just gonna take control all of the enos which are a billion by the way in tokyo because of reasons and then i'm gonna murder all the people well actually no i'm not gonna murder all the people and i'm saying this intentionally because it is confusing and stupid you know how we got to get to know the enos first they're actually gonna rebel first we see them starting to walk out when kokoro gets activated but wait, there's more. This is a hospital, by the way. And you see this? This was our main heroine getting apprehended by the police and she's taken to a hospital first. And then we see that in the hospital, there's no one there, the doors don't open, and one doctor runs to the window and says, let me out, let me out. And then the Eno just crushes his skull like a mashed potato. Oh, yes. Pretty, pretty good stuff. But that is just shock value because later on, we learned that, wait a minute, Kokoro is just killing the humans that have weapons, it seems like, because they absolutely ignore our heroine, every, uh, all the kids, all the everything. They're just... They, they just kill the doctor because reasons, effectively. But no one else without a gun does not get killed. But wait, it gets worse. Uh, these robots just let out heroin and everyone uh, else of the, of the important characters just roam wildly along the streets at random without any repercussions or problems, okay? As long as 
as long as they don't pick up a gun, everything is Gucci and they don't care. But turns out that's stupid because they're actually hurting people. Because they want to keep them and, you know, in check and all of that stuff. So it doesn't make sense why these robots are just letting our heroines uh, uh, roam freely and do whatever the hell they please. There's no reason for it. And it even gets worse with the Terminator. Because they try to apprehend the Terminator and it kills them all. And what the, and, and, and what does uh, the other uh, uh, the Japanese AI do? Well, nothing. It doesn't send anyone after them. Worse off, worse, uh, worse off uh, the Terminator gets one of these robots, plugs it in, in himself, and now is immune to their gaze or something like that. Which is stupid because uh, Kokoro is actually monitoring obviously everything that's happening through the robot's eyes. But she some magically how does not uh, does not see uh, the guy's kids, the protagonist, or the Terminator, and they can just move around effectively almost fully freely without any problems. The Asimo robots created by Honda's engineers at the turn of the millennium, though these actually make good on the promise of that project as helpful, friendly, automated assistants who can stock shelves, walk dogs, and take over all the other menial labor that mankind's so loath to do, something that was only recently fully realized, as clearly was the promise of Sony's somewhat disappointing robot dog Ibo through the Koneko toy that inadvertently gives the kids their head start on that Terminator. And and the anime actually does a pretty good job of exploring some of the more subtle ways these new advancements in automation are changing society. We got protesters at the robot plant, store owners abusing their new, effectively, slaves in ways they'd never treat a human worker. Really interesting world-building nuggets sprinkled- Well, yeah, because it's a robot. <laughs> what do you mean? all over the place that make me want to see more of this alt-historical sci-fi vision of Japan before everything goes down. But what with it being August 29th and all, there obviously isn't too much time left to dive into that before Chekhov's iRobot army gets picked up off the table and put to work. And when it does, let's just say the Eno's... Yeah, again she's uh, this is the scene you can see that she is uh, she's an ai okay she's obviously monitoring everything but somehow it's just not does let's just say the enos more than live up to the chilling animated violence wrought by the show's other more iconic killer robot and also to the very impressive rise of the machine scene in vivi fluoride eyes song which if you haven't seen it, is basically what if Hatsune Miku was a Terminator who got sent back to Oh yeah, I watched like two episodes of this, got bored. Save humanity instead, and any and all Terminator enjoyers out there will probably enjoy that anime a lot too, but I digress. I can see some Terminator fans potentially complaining that the move to a more cliched robot uprising scenario, as opposed to the original version of Judgment Day where the whole earth is well we also got that again japan is the only place that's not nuked in hellfire bathed in nuclear hellfire is just too much of a departure from the brand's identity oh yeah and and this is the part where again it just attacks the doctor for no reason even though it only attacks people with weapons. But whenever they do depict premonitions of that original Judgment Day, the animators at IG show they're more than capable of making that kind of Armageddon ev- Uh, you know, everything after the first couple of episodes is just kind of a still frame, effectively. Every bit as horrifying as the iconic plague. This is good, though, but again, this is like the first three episodes. ...round scene, if not more so, and... I don't know, man. The Enos are just f***ing cool. They perfectly capture that clean, rounded, plastic aesthetic that defined Japanese futurism at the turn of the millennium, like your PS1 grew legs and decided to murder you one day. And while there's definitely something uncanny about them from the jump, they managed to become properly menacing after sustaining a bit of battle damage and exposing the skeletal frame underneath their smooth white shells. They make a real needed to not say that oh yeah here's one of the uh, one of the parts they just ignored them 
they, they, these are uh, these. This is our female protagonist. They notice. They just ignore. Addition to the Terminator universe and complement what makes. And this is when they're rounding up people. This is on the bridge when the Terminator fights them, and uh, Koyaku Konako is just like, oh, okay, well, uh, Yolo four twenty. I guess he escaped. T eight hundred. So terrifying, beautifully. I don't want to mislead you by gushing so much about all the brutal action and cool robots, though, because Terminator Zero also has some fascinating philosophical points about human nature. We already discussed that now. The, these, uh, these points are as, as... Okay, it's it's literally just someone who just understood, oh my god, there's there's this thing called philosophy, and then they try to go balls deep into it, and this is the result. It's pretty bad. Fate versus free will, and a lot of other juicy topics that fire over your head like that meme Gundam. The time it spends focused on a very smart guy locked in a room with an even smarter toaster as he tries to make the case for not toasting. Yeah, by saying, I can't explain it to you just yet. I, I can't. It's not the right time. <laughs> Humanity is not wasted in the slightest, and the it's holographic so. display conveniently built into that room facilitates some visually stunning imagery to accompany all that dry philosophizing. Malcolm's conversation with Kokoro is every bit as exciting and dramatic as all the shootouts and car chases the show. No, not really. Again, all this amounts to as humans destroy planet, humans kill each other, humans bad has to offer. Well, maybe not quite as exciting. There are some pretty damn good shootouts and car chases in this thing. But as far as conversations go, it's as fascinating as it gets. Fascinating enough that nope. it never feels like a drag, even as it's dragged out across all eight episodes, framing all the show's action as a reflection in some way or another of that core conflict over whether or not mankind even deserves to be saved and whether our fate is set in stone or something that we create for ourselves. And I won't tell you what answer it reaches exactly, but I will say that it does set things up very effectively for a continuation of this new and exciting A continuation? Oh no, I'm gonna have to actually finish it. Terminator timeline. Six full seasons yeah. of continuation if Tomlin has his way and Netflix doesn't Netflix it. While still- Well, again, I, I understand how people would like this because, again, the philosophy is not even remotely deep, in my opinion, because I, I philosophy is interesting, so, you know, I, I, I have encountered it previously, so this is like a philosophy 101, but for morons, to a certain degree, the way that they do it. And, again, uh, the actions of a lot of things just make so little sense that it just takes me out. But is the uprising of the machines interesting? Yes. Is Kokoro doing these things cool? Yes. Is the Terminator cool? Yes. Are the action scenes cool? Yes, except the car scenes. I don't like them, honestly. They're, they're, they're just weak, okay? They, they could have been so much better. But all in all, it's a good show. But if you actually look into the story, I think it just completely collapses. And that's, that's kind of all I have to say about this. Anyway, that was Mother's Basement. Bye-bye.